Okay, so this is my first time trying one of these live recordings. This is a game called Hagane for the Super Nintendo. Recently voted as one of the harder games on the system. Um, been doing some practicing, so I don't really think that anymore. Uh, we'll have to see how it all goes. It's impressive looking, but it, the story storyline doesn't make a lot of sense. Something having to do with cyber ninjas or something like that, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> Let's get into this. This is uh, completely live. Stage one. You're a ninja, you have a nice little set of moves. There's all kinds of uh, other weapons you can use. There's a lot of neat little special attacks and things that you can use to dispatch your enemies. You bounce off them. You jump Jumping twice in the air allows you to spin dash. The enemies do not infinitely respawn, but the birds do. I find the sword very effective, so I, just, I use it a lot. This stage introduces you to most of the enemies that you'll encounter. Charge moves take time to charge up, but once you uh, once you get them, they're pretty easy. The noise you hear is my arcade stick. I'm actually playing this on an arcade stick. It's a your, it's your standard black mate flash stick, but I I happen to like it. I've been using it for a lot of games. It's starting to show its age, but it's pretty nice. It's got these little blobs. Guys that drop ceiling wreckage. Blobs that turn to people. I also have uh, projectile shurikens. I have these exploding bombs. I have another, another ninja weapon, but I just stick to the sword most of the time. You know, for close encounters. In the upper right hand corner, you see um you see my lives and another uh, ability. Uh, the jump dash will spin off walls if you connect with something. Stages are really long. Each there's only five stages in the game, and each stage has four or five sections and a boss at the end. It's one of those games where it's, uh, it's obviously kind of authentically Japanese. Uh, it's very similar to a game. Uh, might have played called Musha, classic Japanese tale of horror. There's a pikeman named Yamoto, and you use a, use a spear to attack your enemies. It's very similar to that in kind of the style. Although this game is more futuristic, while that game is more you know, ancient, ancient Japanese lore. And it's probably kind of a fairy tale kind of thing. 
flame blowing guy there. It's not too bad. Thief 2 is not all that bad, but I, ha I have done my homework in terms of practicing. So, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Obviously, there's still some trouble spots in the game. The spin jump takes some getting used to, but once you get your, get your uh, jumping down, the game gets a lot easier. Stage 1-4 was the first stage I had a lot of problems with. The stage of uh, auto automatic scrolling running stage. You have to look out for the floor explodes, you gotta look out. Take some practice to get the stage down. This was one of my big problem areas when I first started practicing for the run. This is the hardest jump, I think. The problem, the problem with the spin, uh, spinning jump is that if you if you wait too late to do it. Like, mo the tendency when playing one of these games is to time your jump. And if you can't, sometimes you can't always... Like, if I wait too long and I want to time it, I don't do it. I have to do it pretty soon before I jump. And this is kind of tricky. If I can tag him with the spinning for cut, yep. Or the spinning, kind of aerial spinning kick. Yep, that's about it. The L and R buttons allow you to dash uh, to the left or to the right, and uh, if you dash forward and, and hold the button, you can do one of the charge attacks. So if you hold it, charge attack, and you can do this dragon move, or one of the other moves. So charge early, tag him. Take some timing. But as you can see, it, it is an immensely powerful move. You can do the little evade dash or hold it down to charge up. So as you've seen so far, stage one was pretty long and stage two is coming along here. This is a very tricky stage. When you first play this level, it's quite daunting. A lot of jumping and these little flying guys that tip when they open up. And the platforming can be quite difficult too. Don't forget to jump properly. Yeah, you got a lot of little obstacles to look out for. The blue flames give you an extra dose of health. You can grab another platform. Some real tricky jumps and things. This part I kept messing up. You have to spin over the platform, but if you hit the ceiling, your spin breaks and you can't do it. Real careful here. So you can infinitely bounce uh, between the platforms. The timing is difficult to get down at first. Oh, it's gonna cost me a little. That makes me really dizzy. I can't watch it for very long. So, really annoying. Not horribly difficult once you get it, but pretty annoying. <coughs> the enemies are kind of the same, kind of just general enemies. They'll fight the whole game, with a few small exceptions. <coughs> the 
this this part is probably one of the hardest levels in the game just due to the very difficult platforming. Just for fun, I checked the price of this game on eBay. There's copies going for like two hundred dollars. So it's Pretty hard to find, I would say, but at least expensive. It's kind of like Radiant Silver Gun or one of those highly sought after games. This is part of tricky, you have to kind of jump twice. You know, you need to make this. Really time these. You actually have to let go of the button mid jump to bounce off the wall. I think. This one you actually have to. Oh man! Oh. Well, I guess we'll start over. Trick it here. There you go. <coughs> Obviously, the game rewards you by letting you keep your health when you don't die. If you die, you revert back to the original three health bars. Stay in the corner, take out these projectiles. Never go directly under him because those little rotating things will fire. See the bottom drop out, start attacking him. And then duck. <laughs> I failed. But duck these projectiles. Salt, you can also slide. a lot of time to kill the bosses. There we go. It's pretty simple, sword strike. Take three. Recently this game was featured on a list alongside Contra 3 and a few of the other uh, games that are considered harder on the A lot of these games, uh, they get to the point where they're just, they become so legendary in their difficulty that, you know, people kind of overhype them and they go, oh, it's the hardest game ever, and then but I also think a lot of people, uh, because of that, a lot of people aren't really willing to put the time in to a game. And I think if more people, you know, actually spent the time and kind of, and actually kind of tried to understand these games and play them more, I think people would actually, they wouldn't have quite the reputation that they have. <laughs> 